Hello, welcome to Maddie Makes. I'm Crystal and today we're going to work on adjusting your drum card. Now this is a series on maintenance for your drum carter. This will work with most drum carters. I have a brother drum carter here. It is um, a standard carter, 72 pence per inch, and it is like their standard size. Anyway, it'll work with most drum carters. If you have an electrical, make sure you unplug it before. That being said, after using your drum carter, wear and tear, eventually the drums will move. And if you see these two pens here, there you are. These two bolts, they, if they're not tight enough or with vibration, they will eventually loosen themselves and move. So if you can see the positioning here, this one's almost fully forward and this one's in the center. And if I take you over to the other side, you can see that this one is more to the back and this is all the way to the front, leaving this gap that is not even, which means the gap in the front and this part up here means this isn't even either and we definitely don't want these two drums to touch and we might be getting a little close there but I want these perfectly parallel to each other um, so about a center sized credit card can fit between now this is part of a Cheerio box same difference but we want to basically easily slide that between and not get it caught up now, before I started filming, I did remove the brush, my packing brush, because I didn't want that in the way. You don't have to remove it to do your adjustments. It just makes it easier so you can actually get to both of your drums here. So let me get this back set up so I can use both my hands and I'll show you how to adjust the drum card. All right, and we're gonna start by adjusting this big drum so it is parallel to the back. So we're gonna loosen up the bolts. So just a few twists to the left, right? Righty tidy, lefty loosey. Yeah, the whole thing wants to adjust a little bit. So, I'm going to grab one of my quilting rulers here. So, this is a quilting ruler. But it'll help me see where I need to be. So, that's a full inch on this side. And it's only, what, three quarters on this one. So, because this band is always pulling, it's the reason it's out of whack. Yeah, we don't want those to collide. So let's. I'm just looking to see what's going on up front. Now I have adjustments I can do on that one too. So it's more important right now that this is parallel to the back here. And at three quarters of an inch is probably perfect. Like your drum cutter might be different. I'm just lining it up at three quarters, holding it, and screwing it tight with my hand dominant. That's fine. Now my back bolt is pretty well centered, and my front one is all the way to the back. That's at three quarters. This I'm going to push forward just a little bit to get it at three quarters. Well, forward and back. It's kind of got to finesse it, then hold it. At least on this side, it's easier because you have the handle, right? Oh, I hope you could see what I was doing. So now that is parallel. Both those measurements are good. So then we want to take it more up front. Now, 
Now these bolts here are the same as on the other side. You just have the wheel that's set in. So whatever I do here, I'm pretty much gonna do on the same side. Same thing on the opposite side. Okay. That guy weighs too thick. Remember our little credit card here? Yep, you can grab an actual credit card or the chipboard off a cereal box. But it's still pretty good size there. Because we don't want our tines any closer than this. We don't want them to go together. We want them to just barely be apart. Right? So I'm going to loosen this up here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Get the drawer out of the way. See that big adjustment? Because this is a rubber band here, the rubber drive band, and it moved everything forward. Now, if you find any dust or whatnot after you move the bolts, just Gently sweep that away. All right. All right. Now we're just going to put this here. Oops. Keep the plate centered. Oh, there's a huge gap. Okay. So we're just going to have to move the whole thing here. And that's at the bolts or at the drum. to you can give it a turn see where it fits so you put them together if it falls through just grab it from underneath <laughs> we know what it did right it went the way of you know the dirty bits but I'm just gonna roll it around so I see full teeth it was trapped there Oh, and it looks pretty good. It's a little wider. You can't see a thing. Let's start over. Okay. okay. So if we get in here. You can see those teeth. Some light. Are a little close. This barely wants to fit in between. You can hear it. And I'm not pushing hard, I don't want to bend my teeth. But what we're going to do is we're going to pull back on this drum because we just locked this one in. Pull back on this drum a little bit, like a millimeter. Make sure it's parallel using our tool and then locking it down. I wish I could keep you that sort of view, but you know, we use what we have, right? Get you a little closer. That's not bad. So you can actually still see the screws and the reflection. Nice shiny metal. Okay, so what we're gonna do is pull the drum back a little bit. So I did that at the wheel. I'm pulling the whole wheel back. Now I can see that this. You know, our credit card fits easily in between and it looks good it's where we want it so we're going to lock this side down and that's as easy as just holding everything in place making sure our metal piece is still centered and tightening it down You want to be pretty forceful with this, right? Because the next time we want to tighten it down is like next year after we completely clean it. As I say that, there's still a pack of fluff in there. Okay. Now, you want to take a look down here. Because we just adjusted this one. 
There's a lot more space here, so we're gonna have to push these in a little bit. Actually, it doesn't wanna push in much at all. But there. All right, looks pretty even. I'm keeping it pushed in. And use the other side to completely tighten these. Put some force behind it. Now, after you got that done, your tripod's not in the way and take it for a few spins. It should feel a little tighter. The wheel shouldn't be um, hindering the, the turning of the, uh, the drum though. And I got them close, but they look good. Oh, there's a tight spot right there. The rest is fine. So I'm going to loosen this back up and pull this drum. I'm going to loosen it all back up. And move it back just a little bit. And now I'm not really pulling it this way, but I'm pulling it this way. back down make sure I didn't adjust it too much the other way but I can't have this drum from the, or the drive band wheel in here so I'm pushing it away from the machine this way Still making sure they're parallel down there. You can check it with your tool if you need to. And lock it back down. Now that was only like a millimeter move. But we're not catching. Oh, we're catching still a little bit, but not bad. good to go. And put your packing brush back on. That's as easy as lining up this hole with the hole here. And put your little key in there. Now leave this loose because we still have the other side to do. another hole on the other side here. Pry that out a little bit. And screw that on. I just rattled it to make sure I had it. Put it back down so it's like packing. And just barely finger tighten it because we don't want this to be on there hard. We want to be able to be able to move it a little bit. Right? But there we go. That's how you adjust your drum carter and put on the brush. Now, join me next when I'll show you how to basically use the drum carter. Thank y'all. Bye.